turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 3. And um, I want to just share a verse this morning. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, a couple things. Uh, we have a lot of people out that are sick right now. And, um, and also, if you're visiting with us, uh, this is, uh, represents one year that my wife and my family and I have been here serving as a senior pastor of this church. And uh, God, has, God has done a, a really great work in our lives in this church in the past year. And so today, we want to celebrate that a little bit, as I mentioned before, and, and share a little bit about what we believe the days ahead, um, what we're striving for and looking towards. And so, but with that being said, in Philippians chapter 3, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, kind of sets, sets his own uh, course of action in regards to looking back and then looking forward. And so I want you to look in verse 12, uh, beginning in verse 12, and he says this. He said, But I would uh, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So everything that's happened to me, I'm doing for the gospel. It's for the gospel's sake. Verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. I am in the wrong place. I was hoping that you were paying attention. It's done. Sorry about that. What happened? I got people coming up and giving me announcements, and then I... Uh, uh, uh. That was a good verse, though. That was an excellent verse. Let's look again in verse 12. Sorry. Make sure I'm right. Chapter 3 of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. That's more like it. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that. Nor I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Now verse 13 is what I'm really looking for here. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, or, or I haven't arrived yet, Paul says. I, I, I haven't obtained yet. I'm not perfect yet. So, so I count not myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do. I'm going to go ahead and forget about those things which are behind me. And I'm going to reach forth, I'm going to, I'm going to press on, I'm going to strive for, I'm going to run towards those things which are ahead, which are before us. That's good. In verse 14 he says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts for all that you have done. You are a good, good father. And you are holy, holy, and holy. And I pray that as we break open the bread of life this morning, your word, this Bible, uh, Lord, as, as we just take our instructions from, from Paul, I pray that you would encourage our hearts today and propel us to want to wanna just do our best at Summit Baptist Church to help gain your kingdom yards. And we pray this always in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. There's two things that I really want to focus on in this passage, and normally I'm a teaching pastor. Today is more of a uh, kind of application rejoicing uh, message, and so um, I think one of the gifts that God has given me, at least some have told me, is, is that I'm able to, for some reason or another, God's allowed me to, to teach the Bible in a way that people are like, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, okay, oh yeah, I get that. And so that's typically how I like to preach messages. Today is not going to be one of those. Uh, so just a heads up on that. It's going to be more of an application and more of rejoicing, as I've said before. But the two things that I want to focus on that Paul says here, that Paul has done in this passage, is, is the first thing is he, he, he looks back. He, he's remembering those things that have happened. Now, some of you are like, wait a minute. He says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. One of the things that you have to understand is, is forgetting could also mean I'm not, I'm not living there anymore. I, I, I'm not going to live off of all that God did in my life last year. That's what Paul was saying. And, and then the second thing that I want to focus on is then he says, all right, after I look back, after, after I look back and, and remember and, and, and say, all right, I'm rejoicing in that. That's great, God. You're awesome. You've done some mighty things. I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to keep pressing forward. I'm going to keep on going. 
I'm going to keep on gaining kingdom yards. I'm going to keep on helping people walk with God, worship God, right? And work for God. That's what we're all about here. And, and so, so those two things, looking back and pressing forward, is what the Apostle Paul is saying in this passage. And today, this message is all application because I want us to do that at Summit Baptist Church this morning. One year ago today, I was preaching my first message as senior pastor of Summit Baptist Church. And I remember we had a great man of God come in and he prayed over our church, prayed over me and my family and, and, and just over our ministry here at Summit Baptist Church. And, and the, the, the theme of that day was, was this thought, the priority of prayer. And we have foundationed all that we've done since we've been here on this idea that prayer matters. And, and we have seen God do awesome things because I believe part in part because of the power of prayer that's been taking place in this place. And so I want to just share a little bit about some of the awesome things that God has done in this past year through the power of prayer. The first thing I think about is the Summit Originals. If you're here this morning and, and this last year doesn't represent the first time that you were really a part of Summit Baptist Church, but you've been attending for 10, 15, 5, 20 years, just, if you can, just stand up. Just stand up. If you're a Summit Original, go ahead and stand up. Okay, great. Yeah, Arlene, thank you. All right, amen. You may be seated. Fantastic. Well, and I think of the Summit Originals, and we have many Summit Originals that are out with the flu or sick bug today. I know Ron and, and Marion couldn't be here, and Joe and Judy are struggling with their own uh, health. And, um, and so, but, but I think of our Summit Originals and what God has done in their lives. A little over a year ago, they were in search, desperate search, for somebody to come lead them as their pastor. And it seemed like there was no end in sight. They would, they would go down one trail and pff, nothing there. Go down another trail, nothing there. And so eventually they just put something on a website or online. And, and my previous senior pastor saw it. He was looking for me to find a place to go minister. And he was like, hey, why don't you check out this place down there? And so we, we came down and then met Ron and, and Marion. And they had me come preach and and here's the awesome thing that I've seen take place in the Summit Originals since we have been here. You see, before I came here, one of the things that I did, and hopefully you've discovered this about me already, is I did my research. Did you know that? I did my research about Summit Baptist Church, number one. But I also did my research about how a man like me and a family like me could try to come help a small little church of about 20 to 25 people. And it was a, it was a tough task as I was beginning to read. And I began to, to, to listen to messages. And, and in the, the pastor world, what we came into at this church at the time would have been what, what is called a revitalization. Some would call it a replant. You see, you don't have to go very far, and you'll see churches are being planted or started everywhere, right? Well, there's also a new push for replants. The truth is, this church was very close to having to shut its doors. And so it needed a revitalization, a replant to take place. And in my studies, what I discovered very quickly was all these guys, probably a dozen or so different guys uh, that, that have been in a situation like some Baptist church was in, they were like this. Every single one of them said this, don't do it. They said, don't do it. It is the toughest job, they said, of being in any other pastor position. Starting a church, if you can do it, do it, they said. It's going to be easier. Why, would you think? Well, because you can kind of do it exactly how you feel you need to do it, right? So you come into a replant, you've got some people there that are really set in their ways, and you're going to have to do it the way they want to do it, and, and there's some things going on probably in the building and all different things going on that they're really going to hold you back. And they all said, don't do it, unless you clearly get a word from God that that's where you're supposed to be. And so we came. And let me tell you something about the Summit Originals. Those 12 men that I learned from and read from and listened to, they all said, your greatest battle is going to be getting 
the originals to change. And I'm just going to tell you right now. Yeah, there have been some little bit of resistance. But our Summit Originals in this past year have been so willing to allow me to lead in such a way that we made some changes. I remember I went to, to Joe Basham a few months ago. And I said, Joe, we need to get some more young families in here. And he goes, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> I said, well... So I don't, there's not much I can do about it, but I think there's some things structurally we can do in the sanctuary that'll make it a little bit more appealing to young families. And, I, and he said, well, tell me what you're talking about. And I said, well, for one, I think the lights. I think that those, when people walk in, they think, oh, this is beautiful. I wonder if I see my great-grandma here or my grandma here. And it's just a, 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 not, not being mean. It was, it's just, it was, it was a very very well set up for the older generation a beautiful sanctuary and he looked at me and he goes ah mark that ain't happening that ain't happening and i said why he goes i've i've had that conversation before and i said i don't know joe i said i just i haven't felt that resistance yet and and i just want to tell you as i celebrate this past year you cannot start anywhere until you talk about and rejoice over what god has done in our Summit Originals lives. I remember when we first started coming and I was conducting our Wednesday night Bible study and I always like to give everybody in the room an opportunity to pray. And many times I did that and there was this awkward silence. So I was like, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> I start and I finish. And a few weeks ago we were in a Bible study and I was, we were in the midst of praying and I remember thinking in my prayer time, God, can you tell them to shut up? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is they were all praying and thanking God and, and asking God to move and work. And what seemed like an, un, uh, like an awkward thing to do just several months earlier, God had been growing in our Summon Originals in such a way that they're being strengthened. I've got messages from Nancy and, and, and Linda and different ones that just say, I really thank you for that message that hit me. And, and I remember getting messages from many of them saying, listen, I can tell you read your Bible, Pastor, and, and help me, help me, where, where can I go? How can I start reading a little bit more? I, I need to learn more, I need to grow more. And I just tell you right now, I praise God looking back at 2018, I praise God more than anything else for our Summit Originals. I want to tell you, you Originals, you we're at the groundbreaking time. The church was at a crossroads. It could have closed its doors. And in most cases, other churches would have. But God put something in your heart. Something like, I'm not finished yet at Summit Baptist Church. And you stood up and you kept conducting Wednesday night services and Sunday night services and Sunday morning services. And there may have been a few that came, but you kept going. And that was your way of keeping this church alive. And I just want to tell you how thankful I am for our Summit Originals. Amen? Amen. And then in the midst of this last year, in the midst of this last year, I think of really our first service that we came like I said, I, the very first service that Mary and I came to, we got here a week earlier than anybody knew. Uh, we were supposed to be here the next week, and we moved in a week early. And so we came in the service, and there were 15 people in that service, 15 people. And I remember going home, and I looked at Mary, and I said, we got our work cut out for us. We got our work cut out for us. And I, I won't go through the details, but I'm sure you can figure them out by now, because in my mind... There was probably a list of 50 things that I was like, oh my, we got we to gotta, we gotta do that differently. We got to change that. We got to get that corrected. And in the midst of this past year, we've, we've tried to do some of those things. But I remember feeling overwhelmed. But then our first service when I preached, first sermon in January, it was awesome to see our Summit Originals eyes just kind of light up. Because in that first service, there was a guy who walked in, had a little bit of receding hairline, 
sat in the very back of the auditorium. Matt Rowe walked in. One of my very best friends. That's all right. Because this is a little informal, just turn around, just wave to Matt. Say, how you doing, Matt? <laughs> Everybody loves Matt. Although he's going to kick my butt for saying he has a receding hairline. <laughs> Matt Rowe shows up. Matt Rowe, one of the most capable men that you will ever meet in your life. And there's one word that is not in Matt Rowe's vocabulary. No. And that's the kind of guy you need to come help in a ministry, right? A guy that doesn't know the word no. So Matt came, and, and at the time, we didn't have any speakers working. And what was working, it was like crackling. And, and, um, and so Matt just helped get everything set up. And as far as the sound and the technology is gone, Matt in the past years been up in these attics and in the insulation, running wires, doing all different kinds of things. And, and just as he's laid carpet, he's done all different kinds of things. But that first service, Matt Rowe comes in. That's a good guy to have on board with your church. Amen? And then, and then that first service, uh, I remember weeks before we were coming here, I put something out on social media and I said, any friends in the area, Summit Baptist Church in Pataskala, we're coming. If you don't have a church, come join us. And the Roby family, they're not here this morning. Gina and Jason Roby and their boys, EJ and Jackson. Gina responded and she had a map. She had a map and she pointed, had an arrow at Summit Baptist Church and an arrow at her house and she drew a line. She goes, we're not even a mile away, we'll be there. And Gina and Jason Roby and their two boys, that first service, were here. And then we had the Shanty Felts, who they're not here this morning either. I know they've had some sickness going through. Jeff Shanty Felt, I met because when I was a youth pastor in Mount Vernon, we put on something that was called the Buckeye Blitz. I know Rich and Cassie are happy about that. All you Buckeye fans are happy about that. I am, I am willing to help reach people with the gospel by even saying, go Bucks." <laughs> but we put on this little thing called, it was more than a little thing, it was called the Buckeye Blitz. And, and I have become pretty good friends with a, an old Ohio State football player, Anthony Schlegel. And, and Anthony and I met and talked, and we wanted to do an outreach in Mount Vernon, Ohio. And so we did that, and, 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 and he, he brought some athletes. We had Aaron Kraft. Remember him? Great basketball player, Aaron Kraft for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He came. Joshua Perry, who's playing in the NFL. He was an outside linebacker for Ohio State. He came. Uh, Corey Lindsley, who was a center for the Ohio State. He used to hike the ball to Braxton Miller. He came. Uh, J.D. Bergman, dear friend of mine, uh, Olympic wrestler, he came, and Anthony Schlegel, and they all shared their story about how God has used their sport to, to give them a platform to share the gospel. In the midst of that service, there was a guy, Jeff Shanifelt, that was there. There were over 500 people at that, at, um, that outing, that Buckeye Blitz thing. And in the midst of that service, over 50 people raised their hand, making a profession of faith, saying, I'm giving my life to Jesus. And I think Jeff Shanifelt was in there. I don't know if he raised his hand that day, but a few months later, he found himself in the hospital. And we had a common friend. I still didn't know Jeff yet. And so a common friend of his and mine went to visit him in the hospital. And this lady asked him, she said, is there anything I can do for you? And Jeff said, yeah, that guy that put on the Buckeye Blitz, I'd like to talk to him. And so I didn't know Jeff. I made my way to OSU Hospital, I think it was, one of the hospitals in Columbus. Introduced myself, told him how big of a Michigan fan I was, which he already knew because of the Buckeye Blitz thing we put on. And in the midst of that, in that uh, hospital room, as Jeff was struggling with his health, he surrendered his life to the Lord, and I got to be in his wedding. And, and when they found out that they, we were coming here, they live all the way in Newark, they said, we'll be there. And Jeff and Ashley and, and Jeff's daughter Kate and uh, Carter and little Cambria have now all joined our church that first Sunday. They just walked in and made this their church. And, and then I, I see my mom and dad and, and James and Claudia. And did your mom slip out? Oh, th where'd she go? There she is right there. I, just, I saw you back there earlier. So just, just, just thinking of my mom and dad <clears throat> and James and Claudia, Mary's mom and dad. And, and I, I, I went through this with my wife last night. I'm just going to say it like I, like I said it to her. So because I love you guys so much, you can take it. 
But when we were at Chapel Hill, you know what their job was? Hold a pew down, hold a chair down. They just came and sat, just came and sat, worshipped, just sat, didn't, didn't have much activity in the church at all. And they showed up, our first service here. My mother-in-law plays the piano. And she plays the piano and plays it well. I'm supposed to be on a part that she's on and I forget. And so she's playing that and I'm singing another part. And she probably gets the blame for it. <laughs> I looked at her today and I said, sorry, I messed that one up again. <laughs> she comes and she plays the piano for us. And James, my father-in-law, sings. And, and my dad and my mom, I won't even talk about all the stuff that they've done in the past year as they've been here. And just so, so rejoicing in, in how God has upped their serve game since coming to Summit Baptist Church. And it's not just sitting anymore. <laughs> they probably wish they could do it more. <laughs> wish I could go back to Chapel Hill and relax. <laughs> but they're serving the Lord. So amazing to think about. And I told you, we had a lot of people out. Donna Ward's another lady that showed up that first service. Donna Ward lives over in Obet's. She heard that we were coming here. She's like, that's going to be my new church. Here's how I met Donna Ward. When I was at Chapel Hill in Mount Vernon, I was a youth pastor. One of the dads of one of my teens said, hey, can you go with me and witness to my father, my stepdad? Uh, he's dying of cancer, and he's unsaved. And I looked at him. His name's Eric. And I said, Eric, I'll go with you. I hope you don't have any expectations that I'm going to be able to help this guy get saved. So we went. Drove an hour and 15 minutes to Obetz from Mount Vernon. And I met Donna Ward, which was Eric's mom, and her husband, Eric's stepdad. And I went in, and this man's laying on the couch, struggling with cancer. We started talking Kentucky basketball. And I don't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, this man's given his heart to Jesus in his living room. And his wife, Donna's like, I would have never thought that. Two weeks later, I went to visit him in the hospital that he never got out of. Met with Donna and met with her husband. Prayed with him. A couple days after that, he passed away and I did his funeral. That's how I met Donna Ward. Donna Ward showed up that very first service. And she's had some of her own health issues, but isn't that awesome just how God just grew a church in one service? <laughs> In such a way. And uh, really, really exciting. And then, and then to rejoice in, in the midst of all that's gone on in the past year. Uh, it, not just that first service, but as we just were faithful to, to preaching and singing and, and ministering to our community. I remember there was a, a Sunday morning that I was eager to meet any visitor that came through the doors. And any visitor that came through the doors, I was hugging them. Hey, I'm Mark. And I'm trying to find some connection. And, and I remember, I'm not even afraid of you anymore, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin and Annie walked into our church doors. And I remember the conversation went like this. Hey, I'm Pastor Mark. How you doing? And Kevin says, I'm Kevin. If you call me out from the platform, I'm never coming back. <laughs> And I said, Kevin's a big guy. And I said, sorry, yes, can I get you a glass of water? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But I thought, okay, that's fine. And got to meet Annie. And Annie started coming on Wednesday nights. And, and I don't know if you know this, Kevin, I'm probably going to get Annie in trouble, but she would come and share a report almost every Sunday of how you were talking about the service. She's like, he doesn't do that very often. And, and I... I'll say this, there's a lot of things that I rejoice for in what God has done in our church this past year. But God is at work in Kevin's life. And he may uh, want to beat me up after the service because I'm talking about him. But I just want you to know, brother, I love you. And I pray for you. And I'm glad that, that you and I are friends. And that you're not going to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin's helped out at the church during work days and Annie and, and uh, just... So thankful for them. They, they started coming to this church because they were going to another church and they couldn't get into the service. They couldn't get in because the doors were locked. And so uh, after a while, they were just like, well, I guess they don't want us here. We're going to go somewhere else. And they just popped in here. And, and we were preaching through the book of Nehemiah and something triggered in, 
Annie's heart, and she's like, I just feel like I need to finish this series out, and then God just began to mend her heart, and Kevin's heart here, and, um, and here they are, and what a, what a great, I just love, I love that couple, just absolutely love them, and, uh, and, and then one day, I was working on the church sign, and some crazy wacky guy came flying into the parking lot. Came flying into the parking lot. Get in here, Vince. <laughs> he comes flying into the parking lot. He's like, hey, can I meet with the pastor? And I said, I'm the pastor. And he kind of looking at me like, you could be my kid. There ain't no way you're the pastor. Well, he listened to me. We were talking. And, Ke and, and, and not Kevin, sorry, uh, Vince Ben started saying, I'm looking for a church. I go to Jersey, but I just want to get involved. I want to start doing something. I feel like I'm called to do more than what I'm doing at Jersey Baptist. And so, you know, my first reaction is, this guy's like really, like, he's like just ready to do it all. This, you know, and so I told him, I said, I said, Vince, I said, step one is you probably just need to come to church one time <laughs> and just see if this is where God is drawing your heart, right? Just see if God's God calling you here. So he came that Sunday morning, and he met with me after service. He goes, this is it. This is where I'm at. And he's like, I want to be an elder or a deacon. I, I don't care what it is. You tell me what to do, and I want to do it. Just ready to serve. And I was talking to Mary about that last night, and I was like, where are those kinds of folks, right? Where are the kinds of folks that just pull into your church and like, I want to be here, and I want to do whatever you need done? That was Vince. And so, so in the midst of that, Vince has just been such a blessing to our church. And, 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 and then he, he started bringing his wife. Lisa, and, and you're, I'm just telling you right now, you're not going to find a sweeter person on the face of this earth than Lisa, and this church is really blessed to have Vince and Lisa a part of this church, and so Lisa started coming and started bringing her sister Lenny, who actually has kind of already been in this church before, and, and so Lenny then brought Leota, they're in the nursery right now working, and, and just, wow, that's a phenomenal family that God brought us and they and they they walk in these doors saying tell me what to do I want to do it this is my church I love it awesome let's go <laughs> I keep praying for people like that we need we need more <laughs> folks like that right uh, that's just so so exciting and so so I think of think of think of how God brought them here and then in the midst of this process in the midst of this process I, I saw Christina showing up and I didn't know Tina, Christina, uh, didn't know her. I knew she was Linda's daughter. And I thought, wow, it's good to see her and start asking questions. And Linda's come to this church for a long time. And, and I said, now tell me, did Tina just kind of go, used to come and then stop coming? Because a lot of folks did that as Summit went through a difficult uh, stretch. From my understanding, Tina, this was never your home church really, was it? And so she just started coming. I'm sure Linda invited her. And, and Tina has just been so faithful and then, and then Bob, right, Bob? Bob Dodell? And you just see Bob. And I, I love when I'm preaching because Bob, I can always tell. I, don't never t I haven't talked about, about this, but when I'm preaching, if, if Bob's not quite understanding, he just looks at me like. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, that's good. I, I try to read the audience a little bit, so I'll push pause a little bit and try to explain a little bit more. And, and it's, it was my fault. I just said something wrong or in, incorrectly. And, and I, just, I just think, how neat is that, that Linda has been praying for her family? And, and, then, and then Tina's son, Josh, uh, came, and they had their wedding here at this church, or reception here. And I met him and his wife, and, and at the end of our meeting, they're like, I think we're going to come stop by and say hi to that church. And, and they're pretty faithful to coming to church now. It's just real, isn't that amazing how just, like, nobody did any of that. That's God at work in this place, God blessing this place because we've made it a priority of prayer. And um, I'll just briefly mention three other couples. Look back and see our, our ladies all sitting in the same row back there. Irene, Roseanne, and Joyce. And, uh, Sonia's not here. But Irene invited one of her friends. And then she invited one of her friends. And then she invited one of her friends. And they have been such a blessing and encouragement to our church. So much wealth of wisdom and and knowledge and just praise the Lord for those ladies back there they sit back there and they are in my opinion uh, one of the greatest encouragers in this church they're amen ladies they're like oh that's good that's good and Irene's always talking about how much she just 
uh, loves the Lord and has a verse and, and just, just so thankful for them. And, and then we have MJ and John sitting back there. And MJ and John, raise your hands just so everybody can get, there we go, MJ and John. So MJ and John walk here. We live right over in this community. Last year I shared a vision of, of trying to reach our neighborhood, right? And who would have thought it within walking distance, MJ and John uh, were right in our midst, going through a very, very difficult stretch when we met them. And I remember one day I was walking from our house that sits back here to the church, and I felt like there was a magnet. That's the best way I can describe it, MJ. Just felt like there was a magnet. There was an opening in between two houses, and I could see your house. And, and I just remember there being a, just this feeling of, I, I got to go over there. So one, one work day, I just, instead of walking to the church, I walked over to MJ's house and knocked on the door. And I'd already met her uh, as we were kind of talking to people over in the neighborhood about our church and, and went to talk to her. And John was going through a really difficult time. And so she shared with me some of their struggles. In the midst of that, John and I started striking up a really good friendship. And, uh, and God has allowed us to minister together and, and being a blessing to one another. And I'm so thankful for John and MJ that the Lord's allowed us to, to be friends and to minister together. Amen? And then the last, last group, I know, I know we got to move on because i gotta, I got to spend time for the nitty-gritty. But, uh, but I see it, it, D. Summers, right, D? And is it Jalen? Galen. Okay, Galen. Galen and D. And now, D, you know Linda, is that correct? And so, so we had, we had a, a really, a really awesome concert on the lawn back in the summertime. And, and I think my Aunt Kathy may have invited Dee uh, to, to that concert. Wonderful concert on the lawn. And, uh, and so met Dee then and, and uh, just talked to her a little bit. And I think she came back the next Sunday. And, and in the midst of that, just almost on a regular basis, I see Dee uh, D and Galen. Uh, coming to our church, and I haven't got a chance to, to talk much with them, but you can just tell with the, the spirit of somebody as you're standing up here, and I just praise the Lord that the, the Lord has brought you guys here, and uh, just praise the Lord for how, I mean, the, the point is this, right? 15 people, folks, in that first service. 15 folks. Now listen to this. Throughout this last year, Good Friday service, that was Four months after we started here, we had a Good Friday service. There were 148 people sitting right where you are at that Good Friday service. I'm sorry, guys. Mark Glenn cannot conjure that up. A couple days later, we had our Easter service. There were 99 folks here. Actually, there were 100 because Ashley was pregnant with Cambria. <laughs> Not that we're about numbers. And then we had a Mother's Day service, and there were over 110 or 15 people here at that Mother's Day service. I think the Bashams took up like six rows as, as we dedicated their granddaughter. Uh, we had over 100 for a cookout that brought us Alicia. Raise your hand, Alicia. Alicia showed up at our cookout right here on the front of our pavement. And, uh, and Juanita is her grandmother, and Juanita invited everybody in her family to come to that. And Alicia was there. That was the first time I met her. And Alicia just started coming to church. And a few weeks ago, Alicia gave her heart to the Lord and got saved. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but there were 100 people for that. And Alicia was a part of that. And then we had a big concert on the lawn. And the point is this. God is at work here, folks. And sometimes it's easy for me, even as a pastor, to get a little bit discouraged thinking, Oh, we got... I want to see more people to come to the Lord, and, and I don't want to sing every Sunday, and, I, and, and, and I, I need some help. I'd like a break every once in a while for somebody to come up and preach and teach, and sometimes they'll be honest. I get a little discouraged thinking, man, it's a lot of work, God. This, what, can you do something? Can you help out here? That's my pity party sometimes with God, to be honest with you. And then as I was this week just reflecting on all of this, I, I, went, I broke down in tears. I was talking with Mary last night. was just like, that's, that's amazing all that God has done in a year's time. Amazing. 
I mean, we had, a, we had a piano player that we had to postpone our services to 11 o'clock because he came from Jersey to come play for us. We don't have to do that anymore because my mother-in-law is now playing. That's awesome. That's really, really great. Updated the nursery and the children's church and two offices and, and beginning to work on this sanctuary. That's, those are great things. Some of you are like, slow down! <laughs> Forgetting those things which are behind. You've got to remember them. But the point I wanted to share all that is I'm so thankful and as I rejoice over those things and remembering those things, I'm thankful for them. But we can't live off of what God did in 2018. And so that's when the Apostle Paul says, so I press on towards the, the mark, the high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm, I'm keeping on going. I'm keeping pressing. I'm keep, keep on working. Keep on doing what God wants me to do. Because we want to see at Summit Baptist Church also, we want to see the gospel reach as many people as possible. So in that sense, numbers do matter. Because if we're not having an impact, if we're not seeing people being refreshed in their walk with God, if we're not seeing people like Alicia and Kate Banbury, who's not here, get saved in our church, then what do we exist for? Right? And so I, I love to, to look at numbers from that standpoint, that God is at work, that God is changing lives. But we can't live in the past. And so in the closing moments of our service, I want to share with you the vision for this year. Last year we had two kind of mission statements uh, that really we took off on. First one was for 2018, we called it Operation Belay On. Raise your hand if you remember that, if you were here when I talked about that. Not everybody, that was just early on. There's probably not even 10 in this room that heard about that. Operation Belay On, here's what it all comes from. Our church name is Summit Baptist Church, Summit, right? Climbing a mountain is kind of our... Like we believe that when you get to the, the peak of your life, the, 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 the best part of your life, you will, you will notice at the top of your life, at the mountaintop of your life, you will notice that you are close to God. You have a great walk with God. You're worshiping God. You get up, you ever, if you're ever at the top of a mountain, you can't help but think, oh, there can't be a God. No, that's not what you're thinking. You're like, whew, only, only a God could create something this amazing. So we believe that at the top of your the top of your own personal mountain, you'll be walking with God, you'll be working for God, and you'll be worshiping God, right? But in the midst of that climb, uh, there's some, there's some uh, terms, and these are kind of our mission statements last year. Operation belay on. A belay means you got, when you're mountain climbing, someone's on the bottom end of the rope and someone's climbing, and the person at the bottom, if you don't trust them, you're falling, right? If you know anything about rock climbing. So Operation Belay On was simply just this idea that, that our church family needed to know, get to know me a little bit better and I needed to get to know them a little bit better. We needed to kind of start trusting each other. And so I went to almost, I wouldn't say every home, but I tried to spend time with almost every person in this church on a personal level, whether it would be at lunch or visiting them at their house or, or whatever it may be. And uh, Operation Belay On. We, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to gain many kingdom yards if we were at odds with each other, amen? And so we had to trust each other. And the second operation was called Operation Search and Rescue. 2018 was mainly about this after Operation Belay on. Search and Rescue was just the idea that people were trying to get to the summit of their lives, the peak of their lives, using all the wrong avenues. Some think, some think drugs is going to get them there. Some think sex is going to get them there. Some think... Some think Money's going to get them there. Those things are not going to get you to the peak of your life. We know this. And so Operation Search and Rescue was the idea that there are a lot of people trying to go that route and they're stranded on the mountain. And we want to, at Summit Baptist Church, find them to help them. And a lot of what we've seen God do here was because of that. A lot of our outreach ideas that we've done this past year was simply with the idea of saying, hey, we're here at Summit Baptist Church. We love you. We want to be a blessing to you. We want to help you take a step closer to God. That was Operation Search and Rescue. And so I have two that I want to share with us just briefly for 2019. You ready for them? 
This is going to be our main focuses, Lord willing, for 2019. Think of, think of climbing a mountain. Anybody here ever done any climbing, rock climbing? It, if you've done it significantly, one thing that you know is you've got to kind of be in shape. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, if you're not in shape, you, you're going to, the guys that you're going with, the girls that you're going with, they're, they're not going to be happy because you're going to hold them up. And so you've got to train for it. One of the things that I very, very clearly see for 2019 is, is we got to, as a church family, we're gonna, we got something called Operation Build Our Strength. Build Your Strength. And what that means is simply, we just we, as God is growing our church in great ways, we, we got to get internally stronger now. We got we to be strong because I'll tell you this, the honeymoon is over with me. <laughs> uh, a year in, and there's, there's going to be some problems that are going to arise. Because, number one, I'm really a failure of a man at times. And so, so but we got to be strong from the inside so that we can be prepared for these things. So that as we're climbing this mountain together, we, we're strong enough to do it. And so there are many things within that that I think, in, from an internal standpoint of this church, that we need to address. And, um, and so, so some of those would be, we're operating on a constitution that was formed in 1993. And I just don't think that's healthy. And, and there's so many things that have changed since 1993. One of the things that you never even had to talk about because it was kept quiet was, was uh, homosexuality or, or, um, or, or even conducting weddings for, for um, people, a, a man with a man or a woman with a woman. So you never even had to think about that. Nowadays, if you don't have that in your constitution, that that's just not something that we believe biblically, you can have a lawsuit put against you. And we don't have anything like that in our Constitution. And, and so there's lots of things that we just really need to shore up to strengthen our core in 2019. Uh, one of the things I just always like to ask, why do we do this? Certainly there are things that Summit Baptist Church has always done for 30 years, and the question needs to be asked, why? And is there a better way to do it? Or do we even need to do that anymore? And, and I think sometimes one of the things that really weakens a church is they have so much going on that we can't get good at anything. And, and so, so I think there's times where we need to look at what we're doing and just either strengthen it or say, hey, can we put that on the back burner and when we get stronger, then bring that back up again. And so there, there are certainly a lot of things that would fall into that category. Um, and so, so Operation Build Our Strength, really looking at what we're doing at Summit Baptist Church from an internal level. And let me just put this point into you. Uh, I believe in complete transparency. But I also believe that it'd be unwise to be totally transparent, like about like where every dollar of the church is spent, saying it from the platform. So what we do is we have business meetings. We have business meetings once a month, the second Wednesday of every month. I'll just tell you this. Everybody is welcome to come to that. Everybody is welcome to come to that. We pass out sheets of paper, and you can see where every dollar is going in this church that's, that's given from the tithes and offerings of our church people. And so we would encourage you to come to that. But there are some things there that, that I believe that we need to strengthen a little bit and, and, and help out. And the truth is, we're going to need some more input. We're going to need some more help with that and some more structure with that. And so if that's something... Uh, that interest you, come out to a business meeting, sec business meeting, second Wednesday of every month. And so Operation Build Your Strength, and then lastly, the last one is this, Operation Climbing Partner. Right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna climb Mount Everest, you're not going alone. <laughs> if you are going alone, say goodbye, we'll never see you again until we get to heaven. <laughs> Operation Climbing Partner. My desire this year for our church is to partner up some way, somehow, with one of these three opportunities. We are smashed right in between two huge school districts that we don't even have a finger in right now. I don't believe that that's God's plan. I believe we are located specifically where we're located because God wants us to have an impact. In Reynoldsburg High School, which is less than a mile, and Licking Heights, which is less than a mile this way. And I don't know how we're going to go about it, but I believe with all of my heart that we're supposed to be helping out in some way, serving with, partnering with these school districts, being a blessing to these school districts. Reynoldsburg, Licking Heights, and then number three, 
this wonderful nursing home facility that's just right down the street provides a humongous opportunity for us to, to go and be a blessing and expect nothing in return. Folks, we, we go to the nursing home, we're not going to the nursing home so that we can grow our church numerically. <laughs> they're, they're in a nursing home for a reason. We're going there because we just want to serve and be a blessing. And I'd like us to see in 2019 to begin to take steps to try to, in some way, in some form or fashion, partner up with either Licking Heights or Reynoldsburg or this nursing home. All less than a mile away. Less than a mile away. And so I am extremely thankful for all that God has done. But I'll tell you this, this guy, I'm not living in 2018. And so buckle up. <laughs> We're still on the roller coaster. I said at the beginning, middle of the year, uh, some of the newer folks that have come, they're always like, hey, we should do this, and we should do this, and how about this, and we need to change this. And so I'm always like, slow down, slow down. And then, because I tell them, I say, because the Summit Originals, they feel like they're on, like, the Millennium Force at Cedar Point, the roller coaster. It's like, let's slow this. Uh, we're, we're going way, we're going way too fast. We're going way too fast. And so, so I'm trying to, tell them that someone originals I'm trying to just let's take another step let's take another step and I'm trying to slow down the others and so 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 with that being said buckle up we're still on a ride we want God to to be a blessing to our church and bless our church and uh, I believe that we have a vision and and the Bible says where there is no vision the people perish where there's no vision the people perish hey are you Are you excited about what God's done here in 2018? Awesome. That should have been a little louder. (laughs) Are you excited? Excited here what God has done at Summit Baptist Church in 2018? Amen. Are you excited about what God's going to do? Amen. Last thing I'll say in regards to our vision. A lot of what we have done has been trying to reach more young families. And I'm I'm thankful. um, My mother came up to me yesterday and she said, Mark, one of the things that I'm doing for 2019 is I'm praying that God would bring at least four new young families to Summit Baptist Church. And my encouragement to you is that's, that's the future of Summit Baptist Church. That's not to say that I don't want to reach and be a blessing to, to elderly folks. I, I would love to fill this place up with elderly folks. I think that would be fantastic. But we need young families. We need kids. Amen? We need them too. And so, 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 so much of, of this vision is geared towards just helping us be able to reach more young families also. And, and so I praise God uh, for that vision. And so let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I've been just three minutes too long. So let's, let's close in prayer and you will be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for um, just all that you have done. I think of, think of the songwriter that really I was going around singing yesterday that said, look what God has done for you. See what he has brought you through. And that is so much our praise this morning. Lord, you have done so much for us. But Lord, I pray that you do even more. Thinking and looking back at 2018, I, Lord, if you allow us, I can't wait until next year at this time to to look back and, and, and even rejoice in a greater way of all that you're doing. To see more people get saved. Lord, to see you give more people a, a passion for ministry, to, to maybe even serve in full-time ministry or, or to help carry the load in this ministry from a teaching standpoint or a worship standpoint. And so, but we leave all those things to you, Lord, but we're excited and anticipating you working in those areas. And now, Lord, I pray for those that are sitting in this service that have needs, always, every service, Lord, I know there's somebody or someone's sitting in that have a sick significant issue or need in their life and i pray lord by only your power and strength only what you can do that you would touch that need that you would work in those areas lord that you would bring hope and peace and confidence that you are in control and that romans eight twenty eight says somehow some way all things do work together for good to those who love you and who are called according to your purpose 
So I pray, Lord, for those needs, and it's in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. A little bit awkward of a service, but hey, it's fun to rejoice and look, look forward to all God has done. Have a great week. You are dismissed.